morning, guys. It's Landon Blake with Refine Horizons. Professor Galagos asked me to do a couple videos for his students. This is the second video of two. Uh, one of the things he wanted me to talk to about, uh, talk to you guys about, was my motivation to succeed. No pressure there. Um, man, have I succeeded? I don't know. I oftentimes feel like my life is a disaster. So, uh, a disclaimer there. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about my motivation to succeed. Not quite sure if I have succeeded yet. I, I uh, often find uh, that my life is a mess. So, uh, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. You know, I try and be humble. Um, and there are, are, I certainly have room for room for improvement in a lot of areas. Um, and I know that because my wife reminds me on a regular basis. All right. So, what were my what was my motivation to to succeed? Um, I was raised by perfectionist parents. Does that count as motivation to succeed? Uh, yeah, no, all joking aside, my mom and dad ran a pretty tight ship. Uh, I find that, that it was often, I worked very hard and it was still uh, very hard to please them. Um, I love them. I love them both. My dad's, my dad's dead, but my mom's still around. I love, I love both my parents. Um, so, you know, I, I, I kind of tended to be a workaholic and a perfectionist. I don't know that that's healthy. Um, but that's certainly probably part of the reason why I am where I'm at today. Um, but I had some other uh, really important motivations, so I want to talk about those. Uh, I was poor. I was a poor kid. Um, you know, my family was was kind of middle class. My dad was a heavy equipment operator, and my mom was a seamstress. But I moved out when I was really young. I was 17 when I moved out of my house, and I was really, really I was, like I was rolling pennies for for gas money broke. Um, I was super poor. Um, I know a lot of you that are watching this video probably come from poor backgrounds. Um, that is a motivation. Um, it's not fun to be poor. Uh, money's not everything, and money doesn't make you happy, but it's hard to be happy when you're not getting your basic needs met. I remember um, when I first moved out of the house, uh, there were days uh, when um, I, I was hungry. You know, there were days when I was hungry before payday because I didn't have enough money to eat. There were days when I would buy 99 cent loaf of French bread at the Safeway where I worked, and that, that's what I had to eat the whole day, was a 99 cent loaf of French bread. Um, does that motivate you? I don't ever want to be hungry again. I might. I might be hungry again. I hope, I, I hope I'm not. Uh, but hunger will motivate you. Um, I worked a lot of entry-level jobs for not a lot of money. So my first two jobs were as a dishwasher. Uh, then I worked at Safeway. Um, those jobs were hard jobs. They didn't pay a lot. I think I made four twenty-five when I started at Safeway, four dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. That was the minimum wage. Um, they were hard jobs. I worked all kinds of funky schedules. I worked weekends for a long time. Um, you know, some of you, some of you kids, young people, uh, will graduate college, and uh, you'll get to go start a surveying job, and you'll work Monday to Friday, eight to five. And that is a blessing and a privilege. And there's a lot of, a lot of people that, that don't get that opportunity. And I didn't, I didn't, I had to earn my right to a Monday to Friday eight to five job. So don't take that for granted. Um, it's a privilege to work a good job with a regular schedule and to not have to work weekends. Um, so be, be grateful and be appreciative for that. Um, Another motivation is I find a lot of a, a lot of joy in what I do. I really love land surveying very much. Um, was I born to do it? I don't know. I've thought about that question a lot. I don't know if I believe in that. You know, I don't. I don't really believe in destiny that way. Uh, maybe. Maybe I was born to do it. Uh, it's a real. It's a really good fit for my personality, and I love it. Uh, I love what I do for a living, and so that that's been a motivation. You know, I, I, I take pride in being excellent. Being an excellent surveyor, there's always new things to learn, but I, I, I work really hard and I take pride in being an excellent surveyor. So uh, that that's a motivation for me. So those are some motivations I wanted to talk about. Uh, why do I love land surveying so much? I think that's important. It's kind of related to my motivation. Um, I like it because I get to use two cool technology. I mean, there's not many jobs where you get to go fly a drone or ride on a four wheeler or run a chainsaw or a machete um, or get in an inner tube. Um, I'll, or ride a boat, I've done, I've done all, or hike in the mountains. I've done all those things as a land surveyor. <laughs> How cool is that? You get paid to do that. So it's like awesome. 
Oh, uh, that's awesome stuff. I love it. Uh, so I get to use cool technology. I get to be outside. I love being outside. I don't get outside as much as I used to. Um, enjoy that as a young surveyor because as you get to be an older surveyor, you probably won't get to do it as much. Um, I really, I like being outside. Um, I knew I wanted to work outside. Uh, I was going to be a forester, ended up being a surveyor, but I picked those two potential careers because I like being outside. Um, not everybody likes being outside, and if you don't like being outside, you can still be a good surveyor, but a lot of surveyors like to be outside. It's a beautiful part of our job. Um, I like that I get to learn about law and history. I didn't appreciate that as much in the beginning of my career, but I really do. I enjoy it now. I enjoy the, the historical aspect of it. I enjoy looking at old maps. Um, I like finding old corners. You know, I found some rock mounts that were set 150 years ago. That's, that's pretty friggin' cool. Um, so I enjoy the law and the history part of it. Um, it makes me feel like Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember Indiana Jones, uh, but here he was played by Harrison Ford in a, in a few movies, and he was kind of like this you know, slash archaeologist, slash uh, explorer, slash cowboy. <laughs> he was cool. Um, and like that's kind of like what being a surveyor is like. It's like being Indiana Jones, man. And I, I like it. I think Indiana Jones is cool. So, uh, yeah, I like being a surveyor because I like feeling like Indiana Jones. Uh, just kind of to wrap this up, uh, you know, I look back on my career as a surveyor. I, I you know, I made some mistakes. Um so I thought about, you know, what what would I tell the 22-year-old version of myself? Don't work too much. I probably worked too much over the last 20 years. Uh, spend time with your families and friends. That's really important. Enjoy life's beautiful things when you can. I'm a landscape photographer, so I like to get out in the mountains and appreciate the natural beauty that's there. Um, you know, other people enjoy delicious food or good wine or beautiful, you know, downtown you know, some people love downtown San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge. You know, everybody has little different things they like, but uh, find something that you enjoy, some beauty in the world, and appreciate it. I still think you got to work really, really hard. I, I have an article on my LinkedIn that talks about working really hard. I think working hard is more important than being smart. Maybe I'll, I'll send that to the professor, and he can share that with you guys if you want to read it. But there's a balance. You gotta work hard, but don't, don't be a workaholic. Life's too short, man. Before you know it, you're 40, balding, and overweight. And that's, that's a bummer, man. So enjoy life while you're young. Uh, have a hobby. You don't want your job to completely define you. That's a problem I've had. You know, I take way too much of my personal value comes from work. That's not good. It's not healthy. You are more than your job. Um, you are more than your chosen profession. You know, being a surveyor is an important part of who I am, but I am other things. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm an uncle. Uh, I'm a minister. Uh, I'm a landscape photographer. I'm a computer programmer. And so those other things I do also define me. I think it's important. You know, you guys as a group are going to have a challenge with this probably because you're, you're probably highly motivated. You're intelligent. Uh, you know, you maybe you come from more affluent families. And so you're, you're going to have social pressure to define yourself by your secular success. And I think our world puts way too much emphasis on that. You know, I think you can be happy as a, I, I love surveying and I'm happy as a surveyor. I think you can be happy as a janitor too. There's no shame in being a janitor and working hard to provide for your family. So have a hobby. Don't, don't let, and have people in your life. Don't, don't let surveying define you. The last thing I want to tell you guys is don't look down on people in the surveying profession that lack your education. That's something I experienced a lot. I had a college education, but it was just a, a, an associate's degree. I never did get my bachelor's degree. Couldn't afford it. Um, and I had a lot of, I have had a lot of people in this profession look down on me because I don't have a bachelor's degree. Not surveyors as much, more engineers, but it's a humiliating thing when people do that. And uh, many of the people that you're going to meet in your profession that don't have your education still work really hard. And those people have really important things to teach you. Uh, one of the most important, some of the most important things I learned about surveying, I was taught by my first party chief, Brent Boitana, who had no college education. But he taught me a lot of practical things I didn't learn in school. Some of what he taught me was more important than what I learned in school. And if you come out of school thinking you're special because you have a bachelor's degree, um, you're going to alienate a lot of people that could teach you some important stuff. So don't do that. You know, in the words of Tim McCraw, Tim McGraw, be humble and kind, treat those people well, respect them, and um, 
try and remember that they have things to teach you. There you go. I don't know what that life advice is worth, but there's a little bit of it. And uh, I'll try and send you some articles, get you guys some links to the, get to some article links to the professor so you guys can read a little bit about why I think hard work is so important. I hope this, the couple videos, I hope you guys enjoyed them. You didn't fall asleep. It's okay if you did or if you were texting in class. I know that happens. Shoot me a te text message, call me, email me, any help you need, any questions you have. One of the things I really enjoy now that I'm an old man is being able to help young people in my profession. So please reach out to me. I encourage you to do that. I promise I will get back to you. I may not get back to you the same day, but I will get back to you. So I'm a resource for you guys, and I want you to reach out to me for help.